Hello, every <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Leon's Corner. Today, I will be reviewing a classic called The Junk Sherlock Holmes. Um, the story is written by... The actual book is written by Sir Arthur Doyle. Um, telling the, about the exploits of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, there's no written book about him as uh, when he was young. However, the movie does uh, give us an idea of how he might have been back then. <clears throat> anyway, the story takes place at the um, height of the Victorian era in London. And it starts with um, with uh, Watson um, meeting Holmes. So they both meet, they go to school together and they become pretty good friends. Um, as the plot goes, uh, there's been also mysterious uh, murders going on. And um, it, it is up to Holmes and Watson to uncover those the mysteries behind them. In time, they do discover that um, their teacher um, was the ringleader of this of this. Um, Uh, murders along with his younger sister. And you will find out what will happen um, later on. So, what can I say about this movie? It has a perfect story. I mean, um, we really exactly don't know much about um, Sherlock Holmes when he was young. The only thing we know is that he was influenced by um, law. An order, as uh, I say, um, being the fact that he became a detective, he was involved with the police, but he was more, um, he was study, uh, some of his cases were part of his studies. Um, as you can see on the movie, um, You'll see him talking to um, uh, of, I don't know if he's still detective, detective Lestrade, and you'll see um, him asking if he needed more information for his studies and Holmes um, told him no, there was a case that uh, needed immediate attention. So at this point, during that conversation, Lestrade tells him, well, why don't you um, 
go back into your studies instead of uh, dealing with this. And it's because Holmes is really smart. I mean, he has proved to have all the means of a great detective. <clears throat> One of his cl classmates had challenged him, actually, um, into finding the trophy that he has hidden uh, somewhere in the school. And Holmes just to, went over every single detail, gathered all the information he needed uh, to actually uncovered the mystery. But in that, it also led him to, um, let's say, an adventure of, of tremendous and dangerous proportions. Um, so I, I, I really love this story. We, um, we see a set of homes that nobody knew. And probably um, he, um, he might have had, we, we don't know, um, in the movie he does fall in love with um, Elizabeth, the daughter of one of the of uh, Brunton's retired school uh, master, and there was a connection between the two of them. Now, um, One of the interesting things is that at this time, um, there was a mysterious man who kept on appearing at a wind at the window of the of um, of the uh, attic. The prof uh, the professor has or didn't want to talk about it because in the past, him and couple people had um, started a partnership in a business, but they went beyond that and. Um, that led to the destruction of a Egyptian village. So a young man with his sister vowed that they would they would take revenge for the loss of his city and his parents. Nevertheless, we also covered the truth of uh, of um, of the teacher. His name is Ray. Um, he actually was the young man. It was said that the uh, a young man with Anglo-Saxon uh, 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 relation or uh, well arrived and 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 um he bound for revenge and he knew these people so that's how the entire um story was set around but he also needed 
um, five women because there was uh, one kind of a, a was a ritual that he needed five princesses. Um, there were there were a need of five princesses, and that's why there was also the the uh, mysterious disappearance of four women by far. Elizabeth would become the fifth princess later on. So um, a lot happens really as the story continues. Holmes and Watson, they start solving the case piece by piece until the final hour per se. That's when Holmes, um, Previous, oh, previously, when he first met Watson, Holmes told him a riddle. And Watson kept on trying to figure out uh, how to solve that puzzle. So throughout the movie, he's, he's trying to solve that puzzle. At the same time, there being... Uh, they're being kicked out of school, being chased by by religious fanatics, and also being being um, an entanglement with not just not just uh, religious fanatics themselves, but the English uh, police division. So I mean. Uh, they were trying to just help out with the with with the case per se. The music was wonderful. I I I love the the theme, especially the beginning theme. which you could actually hear the them throughout the, um, I believe the, the uh, well, or it kind of changes. No, it's the same thing, but it changes uh, by the end of the movie. The actors that were chosen, they were pretty cool. I, I, um, I, I, I could see, uh, see them to be per, per, uh, being actually how uh, Sherlock Holmes would have looked like and Watson. <laughs> I love the ending. The ending, I would say the ending was the, I mean, the whole movie was good, but the best part had to be um, actually, actually the, um, the ending. That final battle with, with between Holmes and his former me uh, teacher and mentor. Um, It was just, man, there are no words to describe it. I 
And of course, if you guys have seen throughout the movie, there's one more piece afterwards. It may be um, yes, it may be a spoiler, but if you guys have seen the final piece of the movie, I mean, if you stayed after the credits, you would be like. What just happened here? I mean, okay. So Holmes and his former men, they get on a battle, literally. Um, at the end, of course, um, Ray tries to get Holmes with and he he goes on uh, the ice breaks and you see him drowning uh, drowning now here, here this is the part that that really confuses people it i mean it got me by surprise because of uh the way it ended and i wasn't expecting that i i seen i've seen the movie before but i never got to see I didn't see that part. So, anyway. He drowns. Then, uh, Lance where Holmes is leaving the school. He just didn't, he, he just wanted to forget everything. And Watson finally tells him, uh, dancer to the riddle and Holmes tells him hey you know what you get the makings of a detective and it stays where at the end the narrator who did Watson says well he knew that sooner or later he would he would um, he, well he forget to thank them to making a, a scary boy into a strong and uh, start of our man, a man, I mean, cur uh, with courage and you know all that. And then he goes telling that he knew that he would uh, actually uh, see Holmes like once again. And that's how the, uh, the movie ends. And then you go to the credits and now nowadays movies do this and I I it back then I it wasn't done but nowadays you could stay after a movie and then there'll be a another part which which uh actually tells you okay this is what's gonna happen on the next movie but in this case I wish it would have happened that way but in this case after the credits, uh, you see a guy checking out on on a uh, lodge, and the lady asks him to to um to uh, sign the the guest book, and his he um he sends Moriarty, which if you think about it. Professor Moriarty. Now this is outside of uh, of the movie. I'll get back to it. But Professor Moriarty and Holmes sure want uh, have something in common. And in the movie, Ray tells Holmes, "Yeah, we both have. We both sure the 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 um, the, um, uh, the keen sense of." Uh, we have a keen sense of uh, um, knowing something 
uh, I I forget what he says, but that they do have the same the same way of thinking. So you would imagine later on how how the uh, the bold minds work as Holmes tries to uh, capture Professor Moriarty and by and go from there, but in the movie, it, it's just revealed how he, how he, um, how, how he just uh, came up on it. <clears throat> so the movie was, uh, in the movie you just show I guess you would say that's the birth of uh, Professor Moriarty. Or Dr. Moriarty, I forget how he uh, went by. Um, but yeah, interesting that there was there were books about Sherlock Holmes, but there was never a book written about the young Sherlock Holmes. And to me, um, seeing the movie, it, it pretty much tells me how he will he would be like as a young uh, detective. And. You know, if I think if I compare this to one of my favorite cartoons, I would say uh, it would have to be. <laughs> I know I'm getting into another thing, other than Sherlock Holmes. But if I compare this to uh, World of Nerds, Carmen San Diego, I I would say. I would say um, there's a relationship between. Both um, Sherlock Holmes and in a sense um, because on 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 we're on the show Carmen Santiago you have two young detectives, second Ivy and uh, they're just, if you put it this way, it would be just like Holmes and Watson. So there is a relationship within both, both, uh, both, both uh, things, though they're not the same. And there's a lot alike. I, I just, what I'm thinking is maybe some word the idea was of um of Carmen San Diego might have been um being inspired by this movie as in a sense but then again um who knows because both, both things have, they're alike in many ways. Does Sherlock Holmes ever catches uh, Professor Moriarty? I'm not sure about it. Because I haven't read the books, but it ju this just applies with the uh, Carmen Santiago as well. Although they did, she was cut once, but um, the detectives also helped her. So, I mean,
I only wish there was another movie, another, a continuation of this movie, so we would know exactly what happened after um, Moriarty's arrival. But one thing we know is that whatever he does, Sherlock Holmes already is one step ahead. So folks, what would you think what would you think the outcome would be? I mean I mean I would love to see a second movie um done to show what happened at that point. But at this point, it wouldn't make make no sense because at this point, I think they would be older already. Or who knows? It could be done. You know, I keep on a skate on a scale on a scale from one to ten ten being the best I give this movie a ten wonderful storyline it just brought out what we never knew about Sherlock Holmes on his in his life the music man what can I say about the music? It's it just it was well arranged and along with the with the movie I I would it, it I just could see it right now in my mind. And of course, the plot, greatest. Uh, the, we just saw another side of Sherlock Holmes that nobody has seen before. So, I mean... In my eyes, this movie deserves... From a schedule of 1, one through 10, like I said, at 10. If it's... If it was the, uh, like, most critics, um, I would give it two thumbs up. Because this was a great movie. Well, that's all we got in Leon's Corner, and... I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll be uh, doing another review soon. I'm not sure as to what I'll be doing, but uh, just keep your eyes open for it. So, as I always say, take her and Till then, this is Leon signing off. Peace out.